stay down and keep clear of the windows. How many are there, Pa? I count five. <laughs> So chipper. Well, it's just a flesh wound. Oh, I'll see to it. Well, I'm sorry we couldn't save your cabin. My name's Herlow, James Herlow. Those Hurons, they called you La Long Carabine. Hawkeye, Mr. Herlow. This is my Indian brother, Chingachgook. We'll build you a shelter that should protect you from the elements for a few weeks. The long carabine. The long rifle. The one they call Hawkeye. But why did the Indians run? Well, because Hawkeye and Chingachgook live here in the wilderness protecting people like you and I from danger. They've been together since they were boys. The story goes the Indian had a son. And the three of them lived in the forest together. When the French were getting ready to lay siege to the British garrison at Fort William Henry, it was the summer of 1757, and the Huron Indians had joined the French to fight against England for control of the colonies. Because of the Hurons' help, the British situation was growing desperate, hour by hour. Since Braddock's defeat, this entire area is thick with as many Hurons as French soldiers. They're driving a wedge into the heart of the British settlements. Those blasted Huron devils. We've lost more men to them than to the Marquis of Montcalm's troops. By your leave, sir. I've twice requested a company of regulars to rout out those renegade Hurons. And both times I've asked you, Major Haywood, where are you going to find those red savages? You can't see them. can't hear them. They know every tree in the forest, every blade of grass. That's the Hurons' world out there. And he's clever, devious, and deadly. of clothes into one bag. Obviously, you can't. But all the beautiful gowns I brought from London. Alice, come on now. We have to hurry. Yes. Yes, you're right. Duncan will be waiting. Well, now, it's Duncan, is it? Major Hayward, then. Oh. <laughs> well, hurry. 
If these reinforcements don't get through to Fort William Henry, I fear Colonel Monroe will indeed be in grave straits. I'll get them through, General. You shan't be leading them, Major. I'm their commander. I have another assignment for you, a delicate one. You will escort Colonel Monroe's daughters to him personally, via a different route. But I, I trust you should not find the journey too unpleasant a task, especially since you seem to fancy the younger girl, Alice, I believe. Sergeant. Send in Magua. You'll be furnished with an Indian runner. He'll guide you to the fort. Uh, Major Avery. This is Magua, your guide. We'll be moving out as soon as the women are mounted up. I wait with the horses. Uh, Major, uh, M Major Hayward, sir. Uh, my name is Gamet. David Gamet. And I understand from General Webb that uh, you and your party are getting ready to depart for Fort William Henry. Pray, sir, may I accompany you? The troops are just moving out. You can go with them. Uh, please, Major. I'm already a fortnight overdue in reporting to my new position at Fort William Henry. Just what are you, sir? Uh, a saver of souls and singing master. Mr. Gamut, I have my hands full with the frailty of two young women without the added burden of a uh, singing master. I'm sorry. <laughs> I suppose it was you who suggested to General Webb that I accompany you to Fort William Henry. Oh, I may perhaps have dropped a subtle hint. Mm -hmm. Major, will we be in danger out there? Miss Cora, I give you my solemn assurance I'll do everything in my power to deliver both of you safely into your father's presence. Thank you. thing. Save the leaves flapping in the gurgling of the water. It's those Mohican ears of yours. I'd wager a side of beef against a finger of jerky if you hear the voice of the turtle two months before you came into this world. Cook, your son made enough clatter whack to roust a bear from his winter's nap. The ears of Hawkeye are as sharp as the Mohican. I wish that were true. Lucas, I not see Galway. I've seen bad signs this day, my father. Strange moccasin prints are in the forest. You're on. Violets are skulking around for scalps and plunder. But whose? 
Better look into this. Horses come behind us. The brush. There, quickly. Major, please accept my profoundest apologies for dropping in on you like this. What are you doing here, sir? Well, sir, if I am to get to Fort William Henry, I, I had no logical alternative but to follow you. Mr. Gamut, I cannot allow that. But, but, Major, sir, at the fort, there are some 15 colonial children awaiting the word of God and the tuning of their sweet young voices and the singing of sacred songs. Surely, sir, you would not deny them salvation. Oh, Duncan, do let him come with us. He seems a pleasant fellow. Alice! Well, if I refuse, I imagine Mr. Gamut will only succeed in getting himself lost. Indeed, worse. Thank you, Duncan. You are most kind, Major. But mind you, sir. See that you do not compound my task. I, I shall make every earnest endeavor not to. I am muchly obliged to you, Miss Monroe. Alice. Uh, my Christian name is David. I've heard say that the savages sometimes communicate with each other by imitating the sound of forest birds. I have heard that self-same thing. A mighty fortress quiet. is our God. A bold I said word quiet, man. Never... Have you lost all sense? Well, uh... Major, when I was a mere lad, an elder in the church counseled me that a plea made in song is better heard by the Lord. Thus, whenever sickly fear grabs my throat, it instinctively bursts forth in sacred song. I, I cannot help myself. If you alert the Hurons to our presence, more than fear will grip your precious throat. Now let's move out. Major Hayward grew suspicious of his Indian guide. Magua! It should require no more than eight hours to get to Fort William Henry. We've been traveling over nine already. Surely we should be inside of the fort by now. The straight path is swift, but the way of the snake will fool any who try to follow. You wait here. I'm going to ride ahead and take a look from that bluff. Yes, sir. I just simmer down, friend. Simmer down. We mean you no foul play. Then why were you in hiding? Well, I kind of like surprises. Especially if they're pleasant. Which this one could be if you've a mind to tell me what you're doing so far off the beaten track. I'm heading a party to Fort William Henry. I'm afraid our Indian guide is lost. An Indian lost in this forest? 
Why, man, the way to the fort is as grand a path I calculate as any that leads to the king's palace in London. What tribe is your Indian? I understand he was born a Huron, but he now swears allegiance to the Mohawk. An Indian born a Huron dies a Huron. But how about you? How can we be sure you're British and not some Frenchie in a stolen red coat? Because I say I am. What's the name of the Major who commands the companies of the 60th at Fort Edward? That's quite easy. I am in command of the 60th. I'm Major Hayward. Oh. Well, now, we have here a very important Redcoat chief. Well, excuse my woodly ways, Major. These are my Mohican friends, Chingachgook and his son, Ancas. You must be the one they tell so many stories about. The Long Caravine. Hawkeye, Major. Just Hawkeye. Now let's have a little powwow with that lost Indian of yours. Do you see any sign of the Major yet? No. Magua, would you please go over to the hill and see if you can't find Major Hayward? Tell us happening. That Indian saw you coming and raced off as if it's seen a ghost. Which way did he go? To the trees. There. It's no wonder that red knave hightailed it out when he saw us. That Indian's name is Magua. He's a leader of many Huron war parties. too well. We've got horses. Let's ride him down. You too, and that red devil will draw you smack into the range of Huron tomahawks. Of course you're right. I... It's just I uh, don't relish being deceived, especially by an Indian. Well, don't fret, Major. When you've been fooled by an Indian, you've been fooled by the best. Hawkeye, by the way, these are the daughters of Colonel Monroe. He's the commandant of Fort William Henry. This is Miss Alice. Miss Cora. And that is Mr. David Gamut. How do you do? And these are my Indian brothers, Chin Dutch Cook and his son Ancus. My brother Uncas fears for the safety of your women. He reckons Magua will find a band of Hurons and return with them. We'll take you to a safe place until morning. Are you sure this canoe will hold the five of us? Just the ladies and Mr. Gamut ride this time. You and I will have to push and pull her against that current. Jin Gutchcook and Uncas will, will take the horses and meet us upstream. Mr. Gamut, Mr. Gamut. All of our extra gunpowder is stashed up front. Now, if we lose that, we'll bite off a bigger hunk of trouble than we've been chewing already. Careful now, huh? Sometimes the forest can be deceptively peaceful, offering only an illusion of safety. Of course, Hawkeye knew better. 
He said nothing of the danger to avoid alarming the women. What's this? Me and the Mohicans keep maybe a dozen of these shelters squirreled away. Salt, meat, firewood, all the comforts of home. Salty, this meat's delicious. What is it? Raccoon. <coughs> Look at it this way, man. That old raccoon might feel the same chomping on a salty hunk of you. I find it quite difficult to keep in mind that a man with such sensitive eyes be a savage. Miss Monroe, I've seen more savages in lace collars and velvet pants than in war paint. The horrible stories I've heard about the Indians. The way they torture, scalp. Oh, uh, most tribes don't practice those god ugly habits. Them that do learn it from the Dutch and the British. Just like scalping. White man taught that to the Indians so the Indian could be paid a bounty every time he Bought in a scout from a white man's enemy. Proof of the kill. The British never resorted to such barbaric acts. Well, you better bone up on your history, ma'am. Scalping started in Europe long before the white man brought his poison here and taught it to the Indians. You best get some sleep. We'd be wise to be afoot before the morning birds waken. Now, you ladies can comfort up in that corner yonder. You'll be warmer there. Our young Mohican friend has just paid you ladies a most uncommon honor. What do you mean? Warriors never cater to women. Thank you, Uncas. What a lovely pouch. I do to offend him. He's not offended, ma'am. It's just that leather bag. Nobody's supposed to touch it. Not me, not even Chingachgook, his own father. Why? When a Mohican lad is on the brink of becoming a brave, he sets out alone into the forest, looking for signs, things that'll tell him who he is or who he's going to be. Sacred things, and he puts those in his pouch of life. He believes they'll protect him against evil spirits. So you see, that leather bag means more to him than his own scalp. Thank you. Now, my lady, I want you to get some sleep. What's he listening for? The song of a bird that's not a bird. The cry of a cat from something other than a cat. In the wilderness, a man protects himself with all five senses. One or two others if he's an Indian. Get some sleep, Major. Ancus Hawkeye and Chingachgook took turns standing guard throughout the night. It was the morning, though, that brought new danger. Magua and his warriors found the horses across the river from the cave and began closing in.
Can we hold them off from here? We'd run the risk of getting cornered. They're across the river. They won't be there for long. Let's get outside and try to keep them there. Stay put, ladies. Don't worry. It'll be all right. Keep down! Adopted Mohawk Magua. Stop firing. Perhaps we've scared them away. No. Huron won't turn tail without taking scalp. You can bet old Mug was planning some new treachery down there. Look. Hurons. Our powder's in the canoe. Without it, we're done for. They're going against the current. If we could run upstream and swim back down underwater, we might be able to cut them off. Wait, my son. I go with Hawkeye. Your father's right, Uncas. He's like the spotted fish in the water. Stay out of sight in the cave, Major. Without the gunpowder, Hawkeye and the others had no chance at all. He and Chingachgook simply had to go after the canoe. The risk they took was leaving the others defenseless. From the very beginning, Magua had realized the value of taking the Monroe sisters hostage and would stop at nothing to carry out his plan. He sent his braves to find another entrance to the cave. before the Hurons if you utter one note. Understand? Try. It'll be okay. I should have packed you off to the fort when I had the chance. No sound. The Hurons found another entrance. Give 
if the Mohican dog wishes the women alive, he will lay down his tomahawk. Jawa! No! no. <laughs> I've already told you. He's gone for over an hour. He went to get help. Help from the Redcoats, who are many rods away. You will be prisoners of the French before the moon rises. All but him. The singing master? No one would trade rifles or powder for you. Toy, Chile. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Why did those heathens spare my life? They believe that you are the son of a spirit. That you are crazy. Oh. Such people cannot be harmed. It is law. That's a good law. There are many moccasin of foot tracks in the forest. A few shoe tracks. Take them off. And the women also. Over. Oh. 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 What about Mr. Gallant? You can't just leave him behind. Uh. Well. the British pride. You people have nothing to be proud of. When the British first come, they ask only to move wagons through our land. Soon they ask no more. They took. And when we refused, they tricked us into slavery and whipped us like dogs. Are you proud of this? And now the daughters of the great red coat chief will soon feel the sting of the Frenchman's whip. French is civilized. They don't torture women. You have much to learn. If your father refuses to surrender his fort, the Marquis de Montcalm, Amagua, will find ways to change his mind. Do you think your British pride will save you from my braves? Cora! What will the French pay for the dead body of Monroe's daughter? No, Cora. Cora? And will they believe you? If you tell them she took her own life? Or will they believe you killed her? Your courage is to be honored, but are you willing to see your sister dead as well? Cora. Tomahawk. <laughs> For the love of God, don't! Does Magua wear a skirt? Does he only fight women?
not put down the knife. No, don't! Hawkeye! Don't anybody move. Cora, cut them all loose. Hurry, Miss Monroe. We don't have much time. Hold it. Gunpowder! Quick, everybody, down! Magua's gone. Disappeared into the forest. I let him go. He's a snake without fangs now. Cora! And look at what he's picking up. Get your shoes on. Woods are full of Hurons now. You can wager something big is in the wind. Can we reach the fort by nightfall? No, but I know a place a few rods east of here where we'll be safe for the night. Major, if you'll get yourself shod, we'll move out. Mr. Gamut. Mr. Hawkeye. Mr. Uncas. I, I, I had feared it was indeed the end. Our singing master's returned. Have we not enough trouble already? say this place is safe, out in the open like this? It's sacred, Major. The Hurons wouldn't come within an arrow's range of it. Ladies, I think you'll find the pitiful remains of this cabin warm, if not too comfortable. safe now. Sweet berries should be ripe about now. As I remember, there's scads of them beyond those briars. Just what is this place, Hawkeye? It's a cemetery. It's more like a monument to me. You know, when I was nothing but a slip of a yonker, me and my folks lived just a goodly holler from here. I had a sister, a little frail mite of a thing. Jenny Rose was her name. She had such bright brown eyes. 
Well, what happened was that white land speculators prodded the Mohawks into a war against the Mohicans. I had just turned 11 years at that time. When the Mohawks massacred some colonists, the Mohicans took us all under their protection. Well, word soon came that there was a massive attack brewing. So all of us, the Mohicans and the colonists, gathered here and built a blockhouse, a few cabins. And then one ice-cold winter night, the screeching imps came yelling and hollering over that hill. There must have been 500 of them. They were painted green. Their bodies had one bold yellow stripe down it. They looked like a horde of devil serpents. Well, the killing went on for nigh 30 days and nights. And when it was over, there were hundreds dead. I helped bury them with my bare hands right here. There were just six of us left. There were two white women, a blind blacksmith, me, and a Mohican chief and his son. Chingachgook and Ancus. All the rest are nestled here in the bosom of this green mountain, red and white alike. And little Jenny Rose with the bright brown eyes. I can reckon appears to be about a hundred or more, all hackled up and blood hot for trouble. You think they know we're here? There's nothing to fret about, ma'am. This is a sacred burial ground. They wouldn't venture near here for fear the spirits of the dead be skulking about. Like I said, there's something big in the wind. I've got to get you to that fort where you'll be safe. Let's get some sleep. We'll start at daybreak. Stay bunched up and keep close to the cover of the trees. With unfriendly Indians about, just traveling through these woods was risky enough. Hawkeye knew only too well that the capture of Colonel Monroe's daughters could easily bring the surrender of Fort William Henry. How much farther is it to the fort? Uh, with a bit of luck and the almighty smile, we should make it in two hours. Ancus went to scout ahead of the group. He found they were in the very midst of Huron war parties, preparing for the attack on Fort William Henry.
two war parties on both sides of the trail to the fort. So that's it. They're fixing to attack Fort William Henry. We've got to reach Monroe before that happens. It's our only chance. Well, we've got a delicate needle to thread in passing through Huron war parties on both sides of that road. What other alternative do we have? I'll talk to Uncas and Chingachgook. Good Lord, man, there's precious little time for talk. Just tell them what to do. I wear no officer's cap, Major. These Mohicans take no orders from me, nor do I give any. And I reckon it's just plain good manners to ask a man's opinion about how he should risk his own neck. Duncan, please, he's trying to help. All right, Major. The Mohicans and me are going to move out ahead and decoy the Huron party on the right. Draw them off. Now, when you hear the commotion, move out as fast as you can and head for the fort. Commotion? Like what? When the Hurons are slaking their thirst for blood, they sound like a pack of wild dogs, you'll know. Um, uh, Hawkeye, we'd all like you to know that we, we're most indebted to you. Like you said, Major, there's precious little time. Yes. Come, ladies. We'll hide over here. And you too, sir. Thank <laughs> you. 
their trail. Shoe prints of one who sings and feet of white women. Prints of many moccasins. The Hurons have grabbed them for sure. Here, hoof marks. They took horses and went north. the man with the evil spirits. I'm sorry to be such a burden to you, Major. You're a curse, Mr. Gamut. A bloody curse. Any sign of them leaving the water yet? No. You sure? Rocks polished by the water have been turned over. They keep heading north. I'd say they're making for the home trail. It runs between the waters of the Hudson and the Hurricane. Into the country of the Francis and the old village of the Delaware. Thank <laughs> you. 
taking us. Our best chance is to attack. We've got no time to waste. If the British are pushed back by the French, the Huron won't need their captives. They'll kill them just for spite. Come on, we've got to find them. of the singing one. Only the marks of deep bare feet. Majors. Tracks go north and east. Like we reckoned, they're headed for the Hudson country. To confuse his followers, Magua separated the prisoners. He sent the men to a Huron camp in the north and took the women east to the Delaware camp of Chief Tominand. The footprints stop here. The other horses joined them there. We went that way. The rest rode off that way. Could be another false trail. Straight ahead is north to the Hudson country. That's still our best bet. <laughs> Fire. Horses moved towards the hills. return with my warriors.
Redcoat Chief and the Singing Master. Our only chance is to rescue them before the warfighter gets back. from him. Get away from him. When these heathen devils tied you up, they wet these leather thongs. Now that they've dried, they've shrunk as tight as iron. <laughs> if I only had a knife. Mr. Gannon, will you please stop being so foolish? Get away from here. Save yourself. I shall find a way to cut you down. Stop her mouth. Uh, excuse me, madam. Tire. Can you walk? the major. Huh? Oh. Don't worry, Major. I'll, I'll try to stop him. Trying to save my life. You'll take no disgrace to your grave, Mr. Cabot. Good enough. Where's the singing master? He's dead. 
God rest his soul. What about Alice? Did they hurt you? No. Oh, thank no. God. Miss Monroe, where is your sister? They left her with another tribe. How far from here? I don't know. Two hours, three perhaps. Uncas. Cora might be dead by now. Why would they do that? Leave her with another tribe. It's an old Huron trick. They separate their captives to scare them and to make sure they're not all rescued from the same place. Miss Monroe, that other tribe. What manner of dress were they wearing? What trinkets? Their old chief. He was wearing feathers and, and beads like Uncas's, and the mark of a turtle on his chest. Like that one. Oh, yes, exactly. Delaware. The good Lord is on our side. The Delaware? I thought they let's get out of here whilst we still have our scouts. <laughs> Party arrived at the Delaware camp, Hawkeye was hopeful that a bond of kinship might help win Cora's release. Chingachgook's father and Chief Tominun were brothers. Years ago, they were both great chiefs of the original Sagamore tribe. Why does a white man and a British officer seek counsel among their enemy? Chief Tominum, we have come in peace to make talk about matters of great importance to us and to you, proud chief of the great Delawares. You are the ones the Huron call Le Long Carbine? That and other ungodly names the Huron uses on me. From what nation are these Indians who travel with you? They are not Hurons. They are not Iroquois. Chief Tominum, we have come to return to you the blood of your grandfathers, the seed of the five nations. There are no more seed of the Sagamars left to grow. I am the last. He is Uncas. And that is Chingachgook, his father, born of the great Unamis, chief of the Mohicans. I believe the Mohican were no more buried in the graves of dead warriors. And you have believed the truth, save for these two who remain. In the morning of my life, I saw the shadow of the white man fall upon us. Our knives were wet with the blood of our brothers. Until all of the great chiefs were dead, and only I, Temenon, Now, even as my night creeps in, I see the promise of the rising moon. There is Chingachgook. Uncas. And his children. Seeds of Manitou to take my place before the council fire. Come. Women are not allowed in the council lodge. Wait here.
Antes. Chingashkuk. You must take your rightful places at this council. There will be much food cooked. Corn, fresh meat, and singing. There is great joy to be planned. Chief Tawanun. You have a white woman here. She is the blood sister to the woman with us. What of her? She does not belong here. She belongs with her own people. The white woman was captured by a Huron named Magua, Firefox. He gave her to us for safekeeping. He kidnapped her. Keep quiet, Major. The Long Caribbean has walked with my Mohican brothers for many winters. He must know the law. The Huron is a coward and is without honor. He has no right to the woman. It is not for me to decide. I must return the white woman to Magua if he wishes her. You'll kill her. You cannot hand her over to that savage. Major, I told you to keep quiet. The great chief Tamanon speaks the truth. He cannot give the white woman to us. Ancas, you know that is so. Chief Tamanon, may we see her? You will be taken to her. Quite decent to me, not like the Hurons at all. Oh. Why tears at a happy time like this? Because they won't let you come with us. What? Some fool Indian law. Don't be blaspheming what you don't understand, Major. What civilized people would return a victim to her own kidnapper? Well, it appears to me that I've heard tell of some dukes or princes that are snatched from one country and dragged into another against their will. And they use some fancy word like asylum instead of kidnap. These are savages! By whose reckoning? The British who chopped off a red man's hand for stealing, or the French who taught him the finer points of torture? The meaning of the word savage depends on who's speaking it. Oh, guy. I'm sorry. So am I, Major. So are the Delawares, the Senecas, the Cayugas. And every red man who's seen his land taken away from him, day by day, piece by piece, till he's pushed into a corner, would nary a place to grow his corn or hunt the deer. And by your civilized people. <laughs> for my prisoners. You have but one here. The others belong to me as well. I obey the old law. You can take only that which I know to be yours. I will take all that is mine. Then pay for them with your blood. Then deliver the woman to me. Out of it, Major. If you try to horn in, even the Delawares will turn against us. Kill us all. Okay. Miss Monroe, if you listen to me, you go with them quietly. We'll be right behind you. We'll have you back before you know it. A proud Huron chief boast of this before his tribe when the cold snows come. Huron, the law is served when the last horse has left this village.
out there to ambush you. Does my son forget the wisdom of his white brother so soon? Now, the Huron Fox could use one of two tricks. He could hide all of his men across the valley, or he could split up his party on both sides. Then we'll make two war parties. One to the valley, the other to the blind side of the hills. Well, now, that sounds like a right smart move. Just cool that hot blood and don't go rushing in.
Easy Galway. Uncas, my son, why have you left us? Your time has been like that of the sun when in the trees, brighter than the light at noonday. Who that saw you in battle could believe you could die? Your feet were like the wings of eagles, your arms like the falling branches from the pines, your voice like thunder when it speaks in the clouds. Your time was filled with honor. The bravest of warriors clear a path for you to the spirit world. My tongue is weak. My heart is heavy. My race is gone. I'm alone. Uncas, why have you left us? Monroe's compliments, Major Hayward. We've been searching for you and the Colonel's daughters for two days now. The Colonel's garrison. Did they repel the French attack? I'm sorry, sir, but Fort William Henry was surrendered. Our father, is he alive? Yes, ma'am. But the others, the regulars, the colonists, the women and children, when they left the fort, they were attacked and massacred by Hurons. Sir, if you and the ladies are ready to depart, we'll escort you to Fort Edward. Give us a moment, Sergeant. Sir. If only I could find the proper words to thank you. There's no need to look for them, Major. What will happen to Chingachgook now? It takes the Mohican only minutes to bury his dead, but many moons to bury his grief. He'll wander the hills alone until he's ready to come down. Then we'll both go back into the forest and try to find what we lost. What is that? Peace. Peace, Major. The most precious thing a man can have. Chingachgook and me, we'll help those who want to see peace grow. Good fortune, Major. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, ladies. Okay. 